This is James Robertson with Syncom Systems. This morning I'm going to do a brief demo that shows you how easy it is to build a simple application, in this case a blog server, in less than five minutes using the Seaside support we've got in Syncom Smalltalk. So let's cut over to the actual screencast and see how well that works. All right, so I've shown you earlier this basic background stuff. You've got the comment class, the post class, and you've got this descriptor class that goes ahead and hooks us up to the database, in this case a Postgres one. So first, let's just do the obvious thing. Let's go ahead and make sure we have our tables created from scratch. And that goes ahead and goes out and creates those tables, or in this case, drops them and recreates them. Let's go ahead and show how quick this works, though. I'm going to create three new classes very quickly. First, I'm going to create post list UI, and I'm going to sub that from scaffolding.generic list UI. And you'll notice that I'm not adding any code to it. So let's create another class. We'll call this post view UI, and we'll pull this from scaffolding dot generic view UI. Again, no new code. And we'll put one more post edit UI, because it'd be nice to be able to actually edit new blog posts. So let's put that from scaffolding dot generic edit. UI. And that's pretty much all I need to do to have the basics work. And let's go ahead and hit initialize on those three classes just so that the browser knows about them. And as you can see, I was testing this out earlier. So let's go back here and start from scratch. We'll go out to here. We'll go out to here, which is our list. You notice no blog post. So let's go ahead and hit new. We'll create a new one. Hello world. And of course, I can't spell hello world. This is a test. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And there it is. Hit that. I've got it. Got all the stuff posted pretty nicely. Let's go ahead and hit delete. And we run back out here. And that's it. Now, there's a bunch of customization I could do from here. But that's it. I've got the basics working. Now, you might have noticed that was pretty fast. Within three class creations, I had a working blog server that was talking to a database. However, you might have noticed a few small glitches from a production standpoint. If you look at the post edit UI, you had the comments and the created timestamp at least visible, even though they weren't showing edit fields. Let's do a little customization to make sure that those don't even show up on the edit form. All right, so now let's add a little bit of customization. On the edit form for posts, we don't even want to show created in comments because those are filled in by default with today's timestamp and with an ordered collection of whatever comments there are. So let's go ahead and customize that by adding a new method. And this is one we inherit, but we're going to customize it. And variable names is, by default, how the form knows how to pick up which fields to show and which ones not to show. Whatever is returned here is what you show. And by default, it'll just show everything. And we want to tell it, don't do that. So I'm going to just go get the super one. But I'm going to copy out two things. So I'm going to do a copy without created. And then I'm going to do copy without, on the result of that, comments. And what this does is it tells the system, don't put these two things into the collection. Just put everything except those two things. So with that addition, let's open up our browser again. And we'll go here to the demo. We'll go to posts. We'll add a new one. And you notice now in the form, I don't even see comments and created. I was seeing them before, and now I'm not. So I'm going to go hello world again. This is a test. Hit save. And there it is. So if I go back here, I view it. If I hit edit, go back into the editor. And I'm not seeing those fields. So that's pretty much all there is to it. A little bit of customization. We have a slightly better form. So far that seems pretty easy. We've added an editor. We've added a viewer. Now all we need to do is make it possible to add comments. And for that, we need to add a little bit more code. We don't really need to change the comment editor. What we need is to add an action that hooks it up to the system. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. All right, so let's finish the last little piece of this, which is to the ability to add a comment to the running system. I need one more viewer here, so let's go ahead and add a new class. I'm going to call this comment edit UI. I'm going to subclass this from scaffolding.generic edit UI. 
just like the poster. And that's all I need to do there. Actually, let's rename that since I have a lowercase e there. Now let's go ahead and hook that in. When I'm viewing, I'd like to have a way of actually adding a comment. So I have to add a new way to render that. So I need to add render actions on. And I actually have a default version of this, which is picking up the save and cancel behavior. What I'm going to do is add a new one. I'm going to add a button with a callback. And that callback is going to be self add comment and it's going to be with some text add comment and then just invoke the superclasses behavior now all I need to do is add this add comment method so let's add a new protocol called actions and we'll add our add comment method and this is pretty quick I go ahead and add a new comment object, and then I have to call it. And what call means is tell Seaside, go ahead and push this interface out in sort of a dialog fashion from a GUI programming standpoint. So just like a dialog box, it's going to come up to the front of the screen, if you will, but in browser terms, that just means it's going to render. And I'm going to put that out that way. And now, again, just like GUI programming, if this thing returns true, meaning the person hits save, it's going to do this. I'm going to add this to the comments of my current object. And my current object, of course, is the post. And then I'm going to have to tell the post to save itself. So I'm going to take that object and tell it to save. And other than saying that should be a temporary, that's about it. So let's go ahead and bring that up. Let's go to our demo again. Let's go to posts. I have my post. Let's go ahead here and add comment. Notice it's there. And I'm going to say it's posted by me. And my content is, this is a comment. And I'll hit save. And now I have comments listed here. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I've added customization in a couple of different ways in just a couple of minutes. And you've seen that I've been able to get a fairly functional blog server up like that. Now, if I wanted this to look more interesting than this, I would have to go in and do some CSS styling. And I'll be the first one to tell you that CSS styling is not my strong point. But assuming that you had somebody that knew how to do that in a reasonable way, you could take this and spiff it up pretty quick. And that's really it. In just a couple of minutes, I created three classes and added a functioning blog server. And then in a couple more minutes, I added some customization and added the ability to add comments and have my viewer not show extraneous fields. So you can see using Seaside and Smalltalk, you're pretty darn productive both getting a server up in seconds almost and having it hook right to a database. So that's about it from Syncom Systems today. I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.